like a special session for property tax relief. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, and thank you for joining us on short notice. Um, of course, uh, with the voters having turned down uh, the property tax relief package in Prop HH, uh, we need to act for short-term property relief now. And this is for the 23 tax year. This is what people pay in 24. Uh, Prop HH proposed a long-term fix. Part of what we want to call a special session in is to propose and, and put together a blue ribbon panel to figure out a long-term fix. And as you know, that includes caps like Prop HH had, uh, it includes uh, property tax cuts. Uh, what other, uh, other elements want to do that? Realistically, that's not going to happen in a week or two. But what has to happen in a week or two is any relief for the current tax year to, uh, to homeowners has to be done now. And I want to highlight what this means. If we do nothing, uh, Colorado homeowners are facing record property tax increases. There's already some relief that's been passed by the legislature for this year, uh, but we have the ability to do more and frankly the responsibility to do more. The cost of inaction is too high. It means people could be forced to make the hard choices between their property taxes and groceries or gas. Uh, for Colorado renters, it means the uncertainty of how much their rent will go up as landlords pass along their costs to them. For seniors on a fixed income, it means cutting back on essentials like medication and food just to pay their property taxes. This uh, crisis is not urban or rural, Denver or the state, it's, it's universal across our state. It's truly a Colorado crisis. A, a reflection of the overall high cost of housing, and that's gonna be, of course, our, our main issue we wanna work on with the General Assembly during the normal session, but property taxes contribute to the high cost of housing, and we should cut property taxes. Um, and Coloradans expect all of us to rise above the partisan politics here. Uh, we're not Democrats or Republicans, we're Coloradans, we're taxpayers. Let's provide relief that Colorado's Coloradans deserve. I'm calling on the General Assembly to convene on November 17th to, for a special session to cut property taxes and provide Coloradans with relief. First, provide immediate relief for the Coloradans who are at risk of major property tax increases. Uh, the General Assembly already set aside $200 million in Prop HH. Since that didn't pass, there's $200 million available to get out the door to cut property tax rates now for this current year that we're in. On top of that, I'm hopeful that the General Assembly will agree on additional property tax reductions uh, for the 23 year. Uh, second, uh, we have another item for this special session. Uh, we have an opportunity to provide 300,000 Colorado children access to food and debit cards from the Department of Agriculture for the Summer <coughs> School Lunch Program during the summer of 2024. And this requires an immediate legislative action to meet the critical federal deadline that will bring about $35 million in benefits to low-income Colorado families with children next summer. Uh, and we want to pull people together to make sure that that gets done as well and that there is time to implement that uh, so that the Coloradans who need it most don't lose out on the funding that they need for lunches for their kids over summer. Colorado General Assembly will gather for this special session at 9 a.m. on November 17, 2023 to, to address these specific crises. Um, local governments need to issue the property tax bills in the weeks ahead, and that's why we're asking the General Assembly to come together now. This uh, really pushes the deadline. Like everybody, we would have loved to have another uh, two weeks uh, who wouldn't, but uh, the local assessors and others are waiting to implement whatever changes the legislature makes and whatever savings we can provide, and I hope they're extensive, uh, need to be done uh, by Thanksgiving. And that's what we are giving the General Assembly the opportunity uh, to do so that these can be enacted in time for the current tax year. Uh, the call is limited to the current tax year. Again, there's plenty that we want to do to uh, reduce property taxes over time. The, the General Assembly can and hopefully will do those during the normal session. But the, the only time that the General Assembly can get out the $200 million reserved for property tax cuts and additional money that we can find for property tax cuts is now. And that's not an opportunity that we want to miss. Uh, it's an opportunity that we want to seize uh, to be able to make sure uh, that Coloradans aren't priced
priced out of where they live simply because of rising uh, home prices. We can and we will provide relief to the people of Colorado. I'm confident that Colorado will emerge from this crisis together and stronger. I'm going to sign the executive order that convenes uh, this special session, and I'll be happy to take some questions. I would also add that we do ask uh, that the General Assembly put together a blue ribbon panel to figure out the long-term way to keep property taxes low, balancing the needs of schools and local government. Uh, we're hopeful that they will take that opportunity to lead on uh, that long-term strategy. Uh, but in the meantime, we want to do everything we can to provide relief to homeowners, to renters in the current year. And I'm confident that the General Assembly, Republicans, Democrats, will work together to achieve this important with that, I'm happy to take some questions. Governor, we've got to keep her taking questions. Uh, what did you hear from the voters in the results on Tuesday? And a follow-up question, was it a mistake to try to take Tabor away? Uh, well, I don't, I, I don't think anybody wanted to take Tabor away. Uh, I would be against that. Um, I think that the voters, what I heard, you know, I talked to people that voted no, there are a couple things. One is long and confusing. Uh, and I think uh, perhaps in the future, Maybe things need to be broken down to two or three initiatives rather than one if you're doing several different things. There's a lot of things that I think have very strong support in change, like making the senior homestead tax exemption portable. Uh, I support that. That's not uh, in this call, because that's uh, the, the timeline would be the same if they do it in a normal session. So I hope that you've had a normal session. Uh, that would be another example of something that was popular. I think the least popular part of it was the formulaic change to Tabor, that people were worried about what could happen in year seven or year eight. Um, I think what people probably want to see is more specificity about exactly how any change would save them money uh, and that uh, it's clear how that occurs. This is a technical, complicated stuff, so it's hard to make it simple for a ballot initiative, but I think part of the answer might be there need to be a few ballot initiatives uh, that are consistent with one another where people can always you know, pick different parts of it. Because I think there was a lot, for instance, using the 200 million for property tax relief, uh, I assume, probably everybody liked that part of HH. Now we want to take that 200 million, since it's already set aside for property tax, we can get it out the door, uh, rather than just sit on it. That would be completely irresponsible to sit on it just because voters didn't want the package of things that were in that initiative. Governor, how much of a cut do you believe is needed for homeowners? What percentage do you feel well, like would be appropriate? Yeah. Thank you, John. You know, um, there's no flat answer across our state. This is challenging, and I, and I want to talk about how diverse the state is. I mean, we have areas where people's property tax taxes are going up 50 to 60 percent. We have areas of our state where the property taxes are flat, are going up 5 percent. Um, we also have different areas that have different levels of mill levies, of local taxes. So uh, I think our responsibility here, and, and, and the Blue Ribbon Panel can, can get into the differentials more if they want to, it's a bigger issue, but we want to provide property tax relief to everybody. We can't pick and choose. We need to get the $200 million out the door for great, great reductions, for knocking money off the value of your home for your assessment, hopefully go bigger on property tax release than that, but this doesn't end the discussion. Um, when Gallagher was re repealed, it left a real void in our state. Um, my general principles around that and any package are the same as they were for HH, the same as they'll be for any other ballot initiatives. We need to provide immediate relief, we're doing that, and HH did that. Two, we need to constrain future growth of property taxes. That means a cap, HH had one, there's other kinds of caps, some kind of cap needs to be there. Uh, and third, we need to address the unintended consequences of Gallagher, which uh, make our state less business friendly by hiking commercial taxes. That's not what we're talking about here, but I hope that's part of the uh, long-term thing. So this is the first one of those. This is a tr um, provide immediate relief. That's all we can do right now, and, and that's what we're gonna do. And then during the general session, we hope that either we can take on the bigger issue, working in a bipartisan way to constrain the growth of property taxes, or establish a thoughtful commission that comes out of this to come back with thoughtful recommendations about the best way to do that. Mark, did you expect that? I think we're going to have Maria call for Well, I, you know, we, we 
Joe, as I said, we had this, uh, we had this uh, glass case ready with this. Everybody was asking what the plan B was, and uh, <laughs> it was in the scroll in there ready to go. I want to be clear, we don't have a particular uh, plan in the sense of the actual policy, but we want to give the legislature the room to use the 200 million for property tax relief, to use more than that for property tax relief. Uh, there's a very small window to do that, and uh, time-wise, because the assessors have to implement whatever the legislature does. So this could not be done, for instance, in December. It has to be done now. Um, obviously, no one ever knows what, what voters are going to do. I think putting options before voters is always a great thing, and I'm sure there'll be more options in this area that go before voters in the future. Uh, but we can, and are, and will provide immediate relief. That, that's what the legislature can do. Uh, they can't come in and fix the, the long-term issue uh, right now, but they absolutely can get the money out the door for property tax relief and, and then also understand the seriousness of the long-term solution of the cap and the other things that they need to look at in the future. Marshall? Governor, when Tony asked why you thought it failed, you listed a few things, long and confusing, too much in one ballot issue, the formulaic change to Tabor. The yes on HH people, which you represented in our Prop HH debate, blames far-right misinformation. None of what you said was about far-right misinformation. Do you believe there was far-right misinformation? And if not, what do you have to say about the people you were supporting that said that? Well, I, I haven't seen what, I, what you're talking about, Marshall. I, I just have not. Uh, again, obviously, I speak for myself when I was uh, in your debate. I, uh, I'm sure I stand by what I said, but I said it as Jared Polis. I didn't say it as you know, an employee or uh, of whatever the campaign was saying. And uh, frankly, I think you probably noticed this, my talking points uh, were probably different than some of the campaigns, and it's fine, people agree on it for different reasons. Um, there were policies that HHS supported and policies I, I didn't support, right? And, and overall, I thought it was a good package, uh, would have, would have uh, provided immediate relief, constrained growth in property taxes, and address some of the um, inequities that make our state less competitive from the business environment. Uh, but what we're here to do today is for the provide immediate re relief part, and I think that's something that both proponents and opponents of HH can agree on, is we ought to do what we can with the resources we have uh, to provide immediate relief to homeowners. Governor, it seems like obviously a lot of your focus and the messaging, the advertisements were all about property tax cuts, but then the kind of education advocates who were a big backbone of the campaign were talking about this is going to be great for schools, HH, you know, correctly saying it could deliver a lot of money for schools over the long term. Why not make the whole message property taxes and schools, did you kind of omit a big part of what it did? Well, so your, you know, your question and Marshall's are more questions for the campaign. I, I hear, you know, I, and, and they had you, I, I speak as Jared Polis and, and um, I have, you know, reasons for supporting the policies I do. What the legislature has the opportunity to do here, I kind of want to walk through the math a little bit of, the, of, of what this, of what they can do. The first thing they need to do is figure out the level of property relief, property tax relief they want to provide. So figure out that dollar amount higher the better from our perspective. Two, they need to figure out what the, how much backfill they're gonna do, right? I think that there's a lot of sympathy for a district, an area where taxes are not going up because the values didn't go up, to say, wait a second, we're not gonna cut your core revenue below what it was before. At the same time, I think, hopefully most people agree, if an area went up 60%, they probably don't need backfill if they're up, you know, 50% instead of 60% after this tax cut of 40%. Um, the third piece then is how they fund the backfill. Uh, and that can be a combination of the 200 million, a Tabor refund mechanism, uh, reserves, we're willing to have that discussion that's mentioned in there. So we want to keep the options open for how to fund it. How much property tax relief uh, and uh, what the backfill looks like and, and then uh, how, they, how they fund that. Um, those are kind of the main parameters around, um, again, there's no, these are all open for the legislature to do their work in a thoughtful, bipartisan way. I call the Republican and Democratic leaders of the legislature and let them know uh, beforehand that we would be calling them back uh, and let them know that we also, the main, obviously we all wish we had more time, two weeks, that we would have loved to done this session December 1st. We would have loved to. Um, we, after talking to assessors and others, we felt that any tax relief for this year couldn't be implemented if it was done in December. It had to be done now, and so that's why we're calling do you want to see a similar approach in terms of uh, assessment rate, flat cut, evaluation discount, just like an HH, or are you open to a different model? 
Well, those are the two parameters you have. I mean, I, I'm not aware of any others. I mean, we don't, we don't spell this out. I mean, if there's some other idea somebody has to cut property taxes, we can do it. But the main two are you can reduce the value uh, that's subject to taxation by 40000 by 50000 and you can cut the rate. I think some combination of the two is it probably makes the most sense. Uh, and HH had a combination of the two. I, I think those are the main two levers. I'm not aware of any others. We would certainly be open to others, but those two are the, uh, the ones that I think the legislature will likely be looking at. Yeah, and along those lines, Governor, uh, how targeted do you want this relief to be to say low-income Coloradans or uh, mid-income Coloradans? And what does this mean for the equal and equal paper refund? So, um, the, 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 so that kind of gets to this last question. There's two ways to reduce property taxes that I'm aware of. Maybe there's more. And by the way, we can't, there's not, you can't implement an entirely new way where there's like a class of things that don't exist. It has to plug into something we know. So you can either reduce the dollar amount of the home. That means that a home, if you reduce it by 50,000, you're giving a, a much larger break to a $400,000 homeowner than a $2 million homeowner. They both get a break. The percentage obviously depends on the, the value of the home. I think you want to do both. Um, in some way, shape, or form, but you want to make the net package progressive in the sense that yes, uh, just like under HH and probably under all the property tax cut proposals I've seen from either side, um, lower income homeowners would get more benefit uh, than higher income homeowners, but higher income homeowners would also save money on their property taxes. Again, it, 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 this doesn't look at income, so I want to talk about this. Like There could be a senior that bought their home and it was a $400,000 home and they're living on a fixed income, and this is exactly the problem we face. It might now be a million dollar home or a $900,000 home. That doesn't mean that the senior has any more money to pay their property tax with. We don't want them priced out of their home. They need that percentage relief on top of the reduction. In fact, it's actually gotten worse since we even talked about it last year because let's say that that senior, yes, their home went from 400,000 to 900,000. Uh, a year or two years ago, you could say, oh, maybe they take a little bit more out on their mortgage to pay their property taxes. Guess what? Mortgage rates are now 8%. So they wouldn't be able to service the monthly payments if they try to take more of that equity they've gained out just to pay their property taxes. So I just want to kind of put a human face on it. These are real Coloradans and kind of what they're facing and, and why we need to be very thoughtful about delivering as much property tax relief as possible. Governor, are there any other past bills that on, on this issue that have kind of died out that you think are going to be resurrected? This is, so we are limiting it to the 23 tax year. I mean, there's a lot of ideas people have on tax relief for the long term, and, and, and those are not three-day, five-day things. Uh, they're going to have the normal process the General Assembly has. Uh, they can't be done for the current tax year anyway, because uh, very little can be. We're up against the wire here. These are, this is really limited to what can be done on the immediate relief bucket. That's, that's what we're doing immediate relief bucket. We also hope that they come together around setting up a process, like a, a, a blue ribbon commission, a bipartisan process around coming back with thoughtful recommendations for the future. Things that I support, I think Republicans and Democrats support, like senior homestead uh, mobility, I've always supported that, but I, and, and maybe that makes the cut, maybe it doesn't. But I mean, things like that will be considered in the, in the general session. Here's why. It, they don't happen any faster if they were considered now. Those would all be for the 25 years. Four tax year, even in HH, which which did senior homes and portability, that wasn't until 25, which was a 24 tax year, because it, it can't happen for this tax year. This is the we're almost through this tax year, so uh, all that stuff will be for the general session. This will be uh, what they have to do now, which is getting the immediate relief really out the door. Elliot, a small part of HH was about changing the way that second homeowners are treated in Colorado. Is that possible to come back in a special session, and if not in the next legislative session, is that a concept that? Again, this is just about the immediate relief uh, for, for homeowners uh, now. Uh, so again, I think that the, if they want to empower this thoughtful Blue Heart Blue, Blue Ribbon Commission to kind of look at those things, uh, that would be um, for the timeline of the, the general session. But this is the only time that this can happen now. That stuff didn't happen until 25 in HH. There was a reason for that. It couldn't be implemented for, and I say 25, that's, that's for the tax year 24. So it happened for the tax year 24. It didn't happen for tax year 23. The only thing that happened for tax year 23 was immediate relief. That's the part we can do. So the part of HH that was immediate relief, the legislature can do that. Uh, and, and in fact, has to do that in the next week or two if they're going to do it. Last question, maybe from Kevin Mundo. Daniel, 
Es un poco difícil hablar como eso en español porque no tengo, no tengo el vocabulario para um, hablar sobre uh, el complejo um, causa de impuestos, uh, pero um, te, vamos a dar la oportunidad a la Cámara para cortar impuestos uh, para casas, para tierra. Uh, es muy importante dar asistencia a personas que sufren porque uh, los impuestos van a uh, añadir demasiado en el próximo año. Podemos uh, ayudar a, a, a la gente um, e, en el proceso de cortar los impuestos de propiedades. We take one or two more, Marie. Go ahead. There's a few folks that haven't had a chance yet. Hey, Michael. Governor, well, let's go to the first people. Michael. First. Okay. Well, uh, I just, you tweeted earlier today, put people over politics when you announced the special session. Can you name all the Republicans you reached out to? I know Andy said you talked to Mike Lynch before the results I, even I came out. I talked to the leadership on both sides. Uh, so um, leadership, uh, uh, Democrats, uh, Julie McCluskey, Monica Durant, uh, Steve Fenberg, um, Robert Rodriguez, that's Senate, Paul Undine, uh, Bob Gardner, uh, Republican Senators, um, House, Mike Lynch, um, and um, uh, Rose Pavlese. So I, I, I reached out to leaders. We're happy to have conversations with anybody, but um, th this was just about, I, I, by the way, I think everybody wants the opportunity, I mean, hopefully they want the opportunity to get the property tax assistance out, the cut out. Um, but uh, I think the main, the main discussion Marshall was more around like what the date would be. Obviously, we all wanted it to be, uh, you know, November 28th or December 1st. But um, upon um, the further investigation of that with assessors and others, whatever property tax or relief, we didn't have the confidence it could be successfully implemented um, if it went longer, especially because special sessions are unpredictable. It could last three days, but it could be 10 days, right? Um, so that was, uh, and, and now we're happy to reach out to anybody. Obviously, uh, um, you know, I think no secret we were considering a special session. Um, as I said, we did have it in the glass there uh, if, if um, Prop HH didn't make it. Um, but it, it still takes a lot of work to get this across the finish line, Marshall. There's not, uh, there's not some deal. It's an opportunity for legislators to come back to provide property tax relief. And we need people over politics. We need Republicans and Democrats working together to do that uh, on the timeline where it can actually be implemented to save homeowners money for the 23 tax year, the year that we're actually in, that people pay early 24. So for that 60% number, you'd probably agree it's hard to get Colorado, Colorado's to get to 60% on anything. Focusing on that message, yeah. in hindsight, was it a mistake to not have the wording the in the ballot language I think that's that right. Tabor funds were going to be used as a foundation for the tax relief? And also, what yeah. would have done differently in hindsight? I mean, I think the more transparency there is about funds, the better. Um, it's obviously constrained by, um, you know, I hope people read their blue books, uh, and maybe not enough people do, because that's where the real need is. You're always going to have something pretty short on the ballot. I mean, you can't have a three-page ballot initiative. But uh, for instance, I mean, you know, it is, for instance, taper surpluses that are used to fund the senior homestead tax exemption. And, and I, you know, maybe not everybody knows that, but they should. Um, obviously, if some taper surplus can fund ta property tax relief that's already been done once by the le or twice by the legislature, uh, that's one of the sources of funding they have. They have general fund, they have taper surplus, which can only be used for reducing taxes. You can't use that for expenditures. You can use it for cutting taxes, and you should. Uh, and they have reserve. Um, here's something I, I want to mention on reserve, and this is kind of new information um, for you. Uh, we've discussed this on the legislators. Um, we are very proud of Colorado's reserve. We want to make sure that we are set, have money set aside for rainy day. That being said, as part of these negotiations to reduce property taxes, we would be willing to have a conversation about reducing that a bit. We're talking like 14 and a half, you know, 14 and a quarter, 14, something like that. Certainly not below 14, if that was used for property tax relief. And also additional safeguards were put around the reserves to make it like a harder reserve. And we're happy to furnish some ideas. Right now, the reserve is kind of a Nominal reserve, it's whatever the governor and the Chavis and legislature agree to each year. But if it was a little bit harder to tap, meaning you only could go into it in a real recession or, or something with your actual cuts, um, you could actually be just as fiscally prudent with a slightly smaller one 
that wasn't uh, that wasn't just a uh, open box that you could take money in and out of. So that's one potential source. Whether they go there or not, I don't know. But we've identified probably somewhere in the hundred to two hundred million dollar range that could be used for property tax cuts from there. But the easiest pot of money to use is the two hundred million that was in H H. That it would be completely irresponsible for me to not call a special session to get out the door. I mean, that's why you know this this had to happen. I mean, we have to get that out. On top of that, there's ample opportunities, and I hope that they can agree on additional property tax relief. There's a real need for seniors being priced out of their home, uh, for people who can't afford their property taxes, uh, for people who might be forced to take out a second mortgage at eight percent and worry about whether they're going to make those monthly payments. I mean, all kinds of scenarios across the state. So we certainly hope they go as big as possible. But remember, this is just for one year. This doesn't determine people's tax fate for five years, for ten years. We do need some mechanism. And again, the HH might have been better as three or four initiatives. Maybe there need to be others. Maybe the legislature can do a cap. But we need some way where we're not doing this every year by the seat of our pants trying to provide short-term relief. There needs to be a long-term mechanism to replace the Gallagher Amendment, right? Gallagher Amendment did some things good and some things poorly. What did it do good? It, 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 it constrained growth of residential rates. That was a good thing. What did it do bad? It forced up commercial rates for small businesses. And it applied one statewide formula to all different areas of our state. Uh, it was based on the ratio of commercial to residential. So basically it imposed the Denver formula on Conejos County, you know, Morgan County, on, um, uh, on Prowers. So, so I think if we can avoid that kind of simple statewide formula, uh, if we can address uh, the unintended consequences of Gallagher, we need to figure out that work. I'm hopeful that a, a Blue Ribbon Commission can really advance that work in a thoughtful, bipartisan way. This special session is just about getting the relief out that we can now to people for the current tax year that we're in, and I think the more relief we can provide, the better. But certainly, let's start with getting that two hundred million dollars out the door. Okay, last question for real this time. <laughs> this is John. Governor, you've done a great job laying out the questions lawmakers face. Yeah. What's the dollar amount? How to backfill? Where to get the money from? But you're the leader of the state. What do you want to see? What's your plan? Well, you know, look, John. Um, you know, our plan is to try to assemble a legislative majority for providing the maximum amount of property tax relief that we can. Uh, so we are very open to the legislators crafting the balance of uh, backfill of sources. We're very open, right? Like, so it's a question of do, do people want to use um, 200 million? I think it's a no brainer. We're going to use that. Beyond that, uh, do, that's general fund. So 200 million general fund. Um, and beyond that, do we want to make this a tabor refund mechanism? Do we want to uh, use a little bit of reserve? Do we want to pair those two? I mean, those are kind of the fiscal things that we have to deal with. We have general fund, that's a 200 million, and, and there's the uh, paper surplus, and there is the um, reserve. I mean, I'm not aware of any other pots of money. If there are any, we're certainly open to them, but, but those are ones that are identified. The, the, we're, we put it in the call, we're open to other pots. If somebody thinks of other ideas, we're totally open to them. So we said, including these possibilities, but not limited to. So if there's other ways of paying for property tax relief, we're open to them, but just with an understanding, I mean, there's not major ones that are like a mystery. You just want them to figure it out. Uh, well, we're happy to have a combination of those. So, I mean, I think, you know, in general, we would like to see a combination of the 200 million, um, the Tabor um, refund mechanism for property tax relief. We're open to reserve, right? Uh, that can help. Do they want to do it? Um, that's a question for them. But again, I, I think it's important that people know that a governor is at the end of the line signing bills. Uh, it's really up to the legislature to work hard in a bipartisan way to craft them. And I have, uh, well, I have, uh, I have great confidence in the fine men and women that serve in the legislature to work very diligently, and our office will provide all the information we can to empower their decision making, to help them implement their ideas, to uh, make sure that this property tax relief is as meaningful as possible to the people of our state. Thank you, Thank guys. You.